Hey, welcome to another project update video. In this installment, we're going to cover the modifications that I made to the hull in order to accommodate the newly designed WTC or watertight cylinder that you see right here. Now, in my first video, uh, I mentioned that uh, my Type 2 U-boat is actually split into three distinct sections. Uh, the one containing the conning tower being the center section that you see uh, right here. And the way this was built was uh, really using uh, two bulkheads, uh, one here and one at the stern right there. Uh, and those bulkheads were essentially mounted to a series of ABS and PVC pipes that served as the original uh, pressure hull uh, of the boat. Now, um, in the original design, um, this, uh, actually, this vertical hull piece, upper deck piece that you see, is actually connecting the two bulkheads together, which meant that this entire conning tower and uh, center hall assembly was one <laughs> solid piece. So uh, as you can see, there was no way uh, originally to remove this upper deck uh, from the uh, center hall uh, to access the interior. Everything was done through uh, the, the, uh, an opening at the front of the pressure hall and at the back. Of course, with this new uh, watertight cylinder design, uh, this whole U-boat is essentially uh, a wet hull submarine. And because of, its, of the wet hull design, uh, I needed to have a way for air uh, to uh, escape the old uh, pressure hull and for water to enter the pressure hull um, uh, to dive and surface the boat. Um, the old pressure hull had, of course, uh, no holes in there whatsoever because of, uh, of it being a dry space. I actually had two uh, PVC end caps uh, sitting one here and one there that sealed uh, the old uh, WTC. But with this new WTC that's going to be fitted inside the boat, I, need, I needed a way for uh, water to enter and air to escape this ABS and PVC uh, space uh, right uh, there. So the first thing that I did was to essentially uh, remove uh, the upper deck section, which I did right here. You can see it separates very nicely like that. Now, I didn't want to simply use a uh, hobby saw and cut it right across, and I didn't want to damage, risk damaging uh, the, um, the hull surfaces that were made. So what I did was literally if you look at the, uh, I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but um, you can see that there's these tiny little ridges visible on the styrene bulkhead. And these actually were a series of holes that I manually drilled using a pin vise. Uh, and uh, at the end, I simply uh, passed a very thin hobby saw across uh, to um, cut uh, the, to separate rather uh, this top deck from the bulkhead and this was repeated at the front here you can see these little ridges and uh, those correspond to the holes that i drilled one by one uh, in order to separate the um, the top deck there very very carefully and inside you can see that i've removed a significant chunk of the abs and pvc piping there and it gives a nice uh, cross-sectional view of uh, what's inside uh, the hull there now, uh, looking down at the keel, you can see that I've drilled uh, some holes, free flooding, free flooding holes uh, at the bottom of the keel right there. And that's really the, the holes that are going to allow water uh, to enter uh, the hull space uh, inside. Of course, the, the, the real Type 2 U-boat uh, didn't have these holes in the bottom of the keel. As a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, on the real boat, uh, there's actually a, a small uh, indentation uh, along the side of the keel and uh, further on inside at the bottom is actually where the main ballast tank valves uh, or openings are, are, are lo located. Um, in the real boat, this would be where approximately uh, where the control room would be and right below that, I think, uh, would be the uh, main ballast tank space, right? So uh, with this hole, these holes in place, water can freely enter uh, the hull section and uh, air is free to escape uh, through the top. 
And if you look at the top deck containing, containing the conning tower, you notice that um, there is this little uh, mock hatch. This is actually where the sailors would enter um, the, the submarine. But in the model, right, uh, it's simply a free flooding uh, space right there. And uh, going further into the conning tower, if I flip this around, you can see that um, there's air simply escapes through the uh, deck grating that you see uh, right at the top there. Um, along with that, also have some uh, holes there on the side. And th th these are present on the Rio boat as well, if you uh, are to look for some uh, reference photographs. So these little holes right here are all uh, holes that allow air to escape. And I'm actually missing a series of holes right here. Um, there are some photographs, uh, some reference photographs that I found of the Rio U21, and I believe it has some uh, a little a series of holes uh, right here, and that's also going to help air uh, escape and uh, uh, not and avoid any air bubble buildup uh, inside the hull. All right, so coming back to the WTC, you might notice that I don't have the bow end cap mounted on at the moment, but that's okay because I want to draw your attention towards the stern end cap that we see right here. Now you might have noticed from my previous video that uh, there's these distinct protrusions running along the uh, top edge of the end cap and at the bottom right here. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, well, not only are they a, uh, a means for me to have something to, to grab onto, uh, when I pull the WTC apart, uh, they are also part of a bayonet locking system. Now I have this little piece right here. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with our RC submarine design, you might recognize this as a bayonet locking ring uh, system. And uh, you might have guessed it already is because uh, th these little protrusions or I guess you can call them circular uh, notches, uh, are going to be locking uh, into this 3D printed ring that's going to be uh, then mounted into one of the bulkheads of the stern section of the U-boat. Uh, the bulkhead is actually right uh, where my thumb is pointing. It's actually quite dark, but you can see the C-shaped bulkhead that's uh, sitting right there inside the hull. So the way this will work, and some of you might have guessed it by now, is this ring is going to be mounted uh, very securely into that bulkhead there uh, and become essentially part of the stern section of the hull. Uh, this watertight cylinder will then be locked to this ring uh, by inserting the cylinder and twisting it. Um, and you see these uh, little circular uh, cylindrical locking surfaces are then going to be grabbing onto the corresponding uh, arc that you see right here. All right, so for a quick little demo, if you can imagine my hand as being the uh, hull of the U-boat, uh, the, the WTC would then slide into the bayonet lock ring. All right, the U-boat hull would then be rotated clockwise, just like so and this would lock the end cap and the WTC as a result in place. So it's actually quite, quite secure. Of course, just to make sure that the uh, end cap is locked in completely, uh, I, would, I would be designing a separate little piece that's going to slide uh, over the bayonet lock ring uh, to completely uh, lock it in place. And to uh, remove uh, the U-boat hull from the WTC is simply the uh, reverse operation whereby we uh, rotate this uh, counterclockwise and uh, this will slip off uh, very uh, simply. So quite an efficient and neat uh, locking system and something that uh, I've always uh, wanted to design and try. Okay, so fast forward to a few days later, I've now got the bayonet ring uh, securely mounted to the bulkhead there uh, on the aft section uh, of the hull and you can see the WTC uh, fitting very snugly uh, inside this part of the sub. 
And in addition to that bayonet ring, I've also mounted these uh, support brackets uh, that's mounted to this bulkhead right here. There's one on top and one at the bottom. And really what they do is they help uh, support the whole weight of the cylinder because otherwise this whole thing would be only held in by the uh, bayonet locking ring, which is uh, I don't think is strong enough to hold uh, the weight of the whole cylinder. Now, uh, I've met, as I mentioned before, there is an additional locking piece that needs to be inserted uh, into that bayonet ring. And that's to really to prevent uh, the cylinder from rotating uh, clockwise uh, so that it, it accidentally unlocks itself. Uh, we don't really want that happening uh, when the whole section is inserted into the bow section of the U-boat. And you can see that on this little piece, I've got this brass rod uh, that fits into the groove of the bayonet ring uh, right there. And this little piece that comes out locks against the uh, L-shaped uh, piece that's already on top of the bayonet ring. And you notice that on top of this, this piece, I also have two little magnets there that correspond to two additional magnets that are on the L-shaped piece. And this is really uh, holding the whole mechanism together and uh, preventing the cylinder from uh, rotating in uh, the counterclockwise direction. So if I can just do this with one hand, let's try to slip this in to show you guys. There we go. And you can see that there's a very satisfying snap there, uh, indicating that uh, the locking piece is properly mated together. So the next step is we're going to move towards the bow section of the U-boat and I'll show you the modifications that I did there. So moving forward, the biggest modification that I did here was to permanently glue the uh, bow section of the U-boat to the center section, uh, thereby making this one entire continuous assembly. Uh, and this method of uh, splitting the hull is actually quite common in RC submarines that I've seen that were built in Europe, whereby um, the stern section containing the electronic rack and the uh, watertight cylinder simply slides into the forward section, uh, completing the whole hull assembly. And um, you can see that on top of this bulkhead right here, I've also mounted a bracket with a, a stainless steel bolt uh, inside. And this bolt simply slides into a uh, hole there on the uh, existing bulkhead of the aft section and really the whole um, aft side of uh, the sub is going to be held in place not only by the friction between the uh, outer wall of the WTC and these spacers right here uh, inside the inner hull but thanks to this uh, little bolt right here I can simply slide in a wing nut that you see here uh, through the upper deck uh, once it comes through thereby securing uh, the aft section to the forward section from the other side. And to install the upper deck is a very simple process also because I've uh, kept uh, the original holes that were there on the uh, forward uh, section of the sub there. You can see here that we have the conning tower assembly with the upper deck with another bolt uh, that goes through there. So by sliding this, and trying to get the rigging, rigging out of the way. If I slide this simply through, like so, right? So everything slides in very, very smoothly. Um, on this side of the upper deck, I simply use a little locking nut. Uh, just have to screw that inside. And the whole thing is now secured. So what remains is to simply slide in uh, the aft section assembly there. Uh, keep in mind, I still don't have I still don't have that from the end cap mounted, but uh, I'll have that done very very soon, and uh, we'll show you the whole sub together. All right, guys, here we have the U-boat all secured with the WTC mounted inside. Now the next step of the build, we're gonna move aft, and I'm gonna begin uh, to connect the linkages from the rear control surfaces like the diving plane and the rudder, uh, up to the WTC itself. As well, I will connect the driveline of the U-boat. You can see the uh, uh, rear propeller is not there right now. 
So I was thinking of using some universal connections to connect the drive shaft to the motor shafts inside the WTC. All right, so now that the major milestone of the build is complete, um, I think we're getting just a little bit closer to having this in the water. Um, and as always, have, if you enjoyed this video, remember to give us a like and a subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next installment. Bye for now.